In this lesson, we'll examine assumptions you can make with geometry questions and assumptions you cannot make. Now, in an earlier lesson, we examined a question similar to this one. As you may already know, we can deduce that the other angle here is 60 degrees. But please note that this calculation is based on the assumption that this angle here is 180 degrees. But is this a reasonable assumption? Perhaps there's a very, very slight bend at the point, and this angle is actually 179.99 degrees. If that's the case, then the conclusion that the missing angle here is 60 degrees is not correct. Now fortunately, on the GMAT, all lines that appear to be straight can be assumed to be straight. So we can correctly deduce that the missing angle here is 60 degrees. Okay, now let's talk about specific angles. If we're given an angle like the one shown here, what assumptions can we make? Well, to begin, the angle certainly looks like a 90 degree angle, but can we assume that it's 90 degrees? The answer is no. When it comes to angle measurements, we cannot make any assumptions. Angle X could be 90 degrees, or it could be 89.999 degrees, or it could even be 10 degrees. There's no way to tell here. Now what about this example? What assumptions can we make about angles X and Y? Can we assume that the two angles here add to 180 degrees? Yes. We can conclude this since the line appears to be straight, in which case the two angles must add to 180 degrees. Now can we assume that both angles here are greater than 0 degrees? The answer is also yes. If an angle is shown in a diagram, then we can assume that the angle is greater than 0 degrees. Alright, now let's move on to parallel lines. To begin, we cannot assume that any lines are parallel unless we are specifically told so, or we have been given information that proves the lines are parallel. So we cannot assume lines are parallel merely because they appear to be parallel. Okay, now let's talk a little more about the figures that accompany some geometry questions. For problem solving questions, it's important to note that all figures are drawn to scale, unless the question explicitly states that the figure is not drawn to scale. So if a figure is drawn to scale, we can estimate angles, lengths, and areas to help us confirm our calculations or to help guide our guesses if we are unsure how to solve the question. For example, let's say we're tackling this question, which asks us to find the value of x. Since the question does not state that the figure is not drawn to scale, we can assume that it is drawn to scale. So if we don't know how to find this angle, and we're forced to guess, we can probably eliminate some answer choices by estimating the angle x. Now conversely, if we were able to calculate the angle, we can also visually estimate angle x in order to confirm our calculations. Now please keep in mind that while visual estimation can sometimes help us answer a geometry question, the test makers are very careful to ensure that very few problems can be solved merely by visual estimation alone. So it's always wiser to use your knowledge of geometric properties to solve questions. Now, before we move on, I should mention that I will not be explaining the answer to the question shown here, because later on in the module, there's a very similar practice question. Okay, now let's examine data sufficiency questions. With data sufficiency questions, the accompanying figure will always conform to the information provided in the question, but the figure will not necessarily conform to the information provided in the statements. So since the diagram will not necessarily conform to the information in the statements, any visual estimation can lead you to make conclusions that are not supported by the statements. So do not use visual estimation for any data sufficiency questions. Okay, let's summarize. In this lesson, we learned that lines that appear straight can be assumed to be straight. All angles that appear in a diagram are greater than zero degrees, Never make assumptions about angle measurements, and never make assumptions about parallelism, and finally, be sure to use visual estimation sparingly.